Are you serious? Are you serious? You're looking at the Yangtze River right there in China. When the water turned blood red uh, about two years ago. Well, this wasn't the only time the water has turned blood red. Matter of fact, it's happened 22 times in the last three and a half years. And there is some that say that God sends, starts turning the water blood red when he gets ready to send punishments upon nations that come against Israel. Now, this is quite a fascinating uh, scenario. As a matter of fact, let me show you some more pictures here. Uh, I've covered, I have covered virtually every one of these. If you was to look through my YouTube channel, you would find where I've covered every time that the waters turned blood red and was actually reported. Whether it was Russia's Sea of Azov or the canal in the Netherlands, the little creek that ran by a church in the Netherlands, or the Beirut River in Beirut, Lebanon, that turned blood red or ran blood red for three days, or the lake in Texas, uh, the O.C. Fishers Lake in Texas that turned blood red. Um, <clears throat> unbelievable. Or the, along the beaches of Australia, or the Sea of Azov along Russia. Uh, or it rained blood red rain in India and in Sri Lanka. Uh, it's just unbelievable when you start to recognize how many times the water has turned blood red in different parts of the world uh, in these last three and a half years. Just incredible sights. But there is biblical scripture on it. And that's why I want to reflect on a minute. I want to take a look at this again, and not just as much about the phenomenon of the fact that the water's blood red, but what does the scripture say about it? What does the scripture say about the water turning blood red? And so I found some scriptures I'd love to uh, read for you. If you went to Psalm 78, uh, you would find there's a scripture where God speaks to David. And starts telling David that, uh, you know, these, these are not accidental situations. This, you know, God definitely sent the plagues upon Egypt, but it's not just Egypt. You know, folks, you can read about the water turning blood red in the book of Revelation in uh, chapter 16. You can read about the water turning blood red uh, in Ezekiel chapter 32 verse 6. Uh, you can read about uh, different signs in the last days. Here's what it says in Psalms 78, verse 43. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan and had turned their rivers into blood and their floods that they would could not drink. He sent divers sorts of flies among them which devoured them, and frogs, which destroyed them. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar and their labor unto locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hail and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence. He and he smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the chief of their strength in tabernacles of Ham, but made his own people to go forth like sheep and guided them into the wilderness like a flock. I'm here to tell you right now, he led them on safety so that they feared not, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. But the first thing he did was turn the water blood red. So when I take a step back and look at this, God's very patient. He's not nervous. Our little short lifetime span 
is minuscule in the eyes of God, who's Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last. You might be getting tired of hearing about the last days. God's just, just now entering into his last days. He's going to see his prophetic word carried out completely to a T. We're right now witnessing the last days. And we're ever closer to the coming of Christ. But the prophecies that are coming forth now are pointing to the midnight hour. Benjamin Netanyahu is coming to America to speak. Some are ridiculing the man. Some are boycotting the man. Some want to assassinate the man. But God has sent him on a mission to deliver the warning, not only to the United States, but to the world. Now, Tuesday, March 3rd, at 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time, he is scheduled to speak. I'm going to go live. That I usually go live, of course, you guys know this, every day from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. But that day, I'm going to go live at about 10 a.m. and stay with it through his speech on into my regular program. It'll be a special five-hour broadcast. You don't want to miss it. The prophetic words he speaks may be right out of the pages of the Bible. And the question is, are all these times the waters turn blood red? Is God sending a warning? We need to go back and look at all 22 locations. Texas, Memphis, Tennessee, Australia, Russia, India, Sri Lanka, China, Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, I'm just off the top of my head remembering them. We've got to go look and see. Was God sending a significant message to the nations by revealing plague number one? Are we living in the last days? Something biblical is going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ. America, please, pull together. Church, pull together. Hear me when I tell you this. This is the prophetic hour. It is upon us. What will we do with it? Let's keep praying. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Be born again. Washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Be saved by grace through faith. It's not in ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son in the world to condemn the world, but the world to him might be saved.